happy 2018 colorettes and color studs. It's me, Debbie, and welcome to the first colorit tutorial of the year. Did you enjoy our last tutorial? I hope you learned a bunch of stuff from it. Don't forget to comment the parts that you enjoyed and the things you learned from the previous tutorial down below. For this episode, we'll be coloring cute and fluffy snow dogs from the book Dogs, Everyone's Best Friend. It's a really awesome book especially if you're a dog lover. I mean, who can resist coloring cute dogs, right? If you want to get your hands on this book, all you gotta do is check out our links below. Today, we'll be using the 48 Premium Colored Pencil Set. Pencils are the perfect media for this book because we're doing textures and coloring some fur. They really bring out texture and depth. The links to the pencil set are also down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more coloring tutorials and techniques. If you know someone who loves coloring, give this video a like and a share, because the more the merrier, right? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more coloring tutorials and techniques. Okay, here we go, let's start coloring! So when I look at these dogs, they're very familiar to me, because I have a few snow dogs of my own. These dogs are called Chow Chows, and they're very furry, and they can definitely withstand the cold. And this is a very good start to coloring your Chow Chow, because this is a good experiment on coloring fur, as they are very furry. Chow Chows can be more like bears or lions, depending on their mane or their fluffiness. So I start coloring the larger dog first, and it's very good since there's a big coverage, I can start with a base color, and I'm using the technique that we talked about during the last tutorial, which was using the full length of the lead of the pencil. You are able to color faster because you're covering up more space, and the great thing about it is it doesn't hurt the wrists. And if you wanna make it darker, you just press a little harder. For the first chow, I'm using cinnamon colored chow or the red colored chow. I think that's one of the more popular colors of the chow chows. And my chow chow has these colors as well. I have a cinnamon colored chow as well as a, a cream colored chow chow. Always start with the base color. Just to try to fill up the white, especially if you don't want the white to be seen. So just fill it up with a base color at first. And you don't, don't press too hard because it's only it's, it's just there to, to cover up the white spots. So base colors are usually what I use as the mid-tones. Later on I will be adding highlights and I will also be adding shadows for shading. Don't worry too much about uh, whether or not you're achieving the 3D effect yet. Just, just, just try to fill it up with that base color. Uh, Chow Chows come in many shades, just like Color It. It has so many colored pencils. <laughs> the colored pencils have a variety of sh colors, to, even uh, based on your the hue you want to use or the colors. If you want reds, there's so many different kinds of reds. So I see a really fun analogy to these. And I'm a very big dog person, so this is uh, one of my favorite coloring books. So when I was coloring this, I was just remembering or I'm thinking I was thinking about my own dogs and the things I love about my dogs is they're always excited when you arrive. So the next color I'm using for the bigger chow is the brown snuggle. So I'm looking up uh, warmer tones so I, because I want to ch want to achieve the reddish cinnamon colored chow chow for the first dog. So the brown snuggle is a good darker tone. This time, I'm following the, the path of where the, the fur would be flowing. So the strokes that I'm using are following where the mane would be going. You know? So usually it's going to be on an up and down position, up to down, because gravity. <laughs> gravity brings things down, so start from up to down. And you just follow that same motion. Just imagine where these lines go. So imagine, I'm imagining the chow chow in like where the shades would be. I guess I'm lucky because I have my own snow dog, so I can use it as reference. 
and I know where the dark parts would be. So most of the time, the dark parts would be somewhere by the eyes and for sure by the mouth the snout area. Some chows have a darker snout and others have the snout getting lighter. So shadow, I start with the shadows before I add the highlights. They also have this a more frowny face. So above the forehead has also has its own folds and for sure below the snout, like they have bits of folds as well. They're also not the most active type of dogs. My boy Chow, who's a cinnamon colored Chow, very similar to the one that we're shading right now, is very lazy Chow Chow. He loved walks, but if he was just at home, he would just be sleeping. The fun thing about Chows too is uh, they have this, the, their snout is kind of shorter, although there are some Chows with a longer snout. Uh, if they have a shorter snout, like Pugs, they have a tendency to snore, and it almost sounds like like an engine running, like a motor. They also have a mind of their own, so don't expect them to always listen to what you say. They have to decide on their own whether or not they will abide <laughs> to your commands. So I, I'm just juggling between the brown snuggle for the darker shades and then the spring peach to make it a little darker. And then I'm going with summer tangerine to try to fill up, uh, cause I wanted to add a more orange tone. So it's summer tangerine and happy yellows are also very good. I was almost want to make it look more golden chow. So if we, if you also want to color a little faster, it's also best to plan out the colors you want to use ahead of time. For these chow chows, I decided uh, ahead of time that this the first chow will be a reddish color chow. The second would be the one on the right. The puppy on the right would be a more cream colored and the puppy on the left would be the darker chow. So the grayish, blackish, bluish colored chow. So I wanted a little bit of warm colors as well as cool colors. So I already picked a few colors that might fit with my colors for each chow. So it would also be great to have your own scratch paper or used, any used paper you can use to test out the colors you like first. And you can even try blending it there on the scratch paper for ahead of time. For the red chow, I, I already limited my palette and using some specific colors from the Color It Colored Pencil set. I'm using, once again, the Spring Peach, the Brown Snuggle, the Happy Yellow, the Summer Tangerine, so yellows, oranges, and to add darker, the darkest of the tones, which I haven't added yet, is the Dark Chocolate Brown. And try to check it out using your scratch paper, your test paper, see if it looks good, Does it, if it blends well. So my biggest suggestion when you're coloring fur is follow the flow of where the fur is going, the movement of the fur. The illustration usually already has guides to which uh, the path is of the fur, so you can follow the curves of the, the fur of the dog. And imagine your dog, uh, your subject, doesn't have to be a dog, imagine it uh, having shadows where if there was light placed on them, where would the darker parts be? Where would the lighter parts be? Another fun thing about colored pencils is you can uh, start with the general colors first, like the base colors, and then once it's covered up, most of the white is covered up, then you can add bits of the detail, more and more detail. That's when you can make the lines more obvious, the strokes of the, the browns that you're using. When you're adding all the details of the fur, this is also something we call texturing, adding texture. Because if you don't add these, these uh, fur strokes, they'll just look more like uh, blended colors. So adding texture really brings out the furriness of the fur. So just have fun with it and build up your colors. So I also understand adding texture might take a lot, uh, some time. So you don't necessarily have to keep staring at what you're coloring in one sitting. You can, you can take a break, you can pause every now and then. You can watch a show while you're coloring or listening to it because coloring is just fun and relaxing. If you're getting tired, you can take a break 
You can do other things. You can you can play with your dogs. You can take give your wrists a break and try not to strain your eyes too much. So what I would do is I'd I'd pause, look around, look at other things. Sometimes you can take a break and when you come back, you have uh whole new ideas of what colors you want to use. Just keep blending. And don't forget the darker you the harder you press the, the colored pencil, the darker the color will come out. So if you don't want it to be too dark yet, don't press too hard. Add some happy yellows to make it more yellowish and warmer. Golden brown type of chow. So I'm just gonna continue building up the chow. The, the shades of browns and oranges, tints, and yellows using the summer tangerine, spring peach, brown snuggle, happy yellow, and lastly the dark chocolate brown for the darkest tones. If you're going for holding the pencil uh, and using up the length of the, the colored pencil, make sure that the colored pencil is is uh, sharpened. The colored colored pencil also comes with its own sharpener, so it's very convenient. So I'm done building up the colors, and the last thing I'm doing is using the dark chocolate brown to make it darker on the areas that I want it to be dark, further emphasizing the dark parts of the fur, and at the same time adding texture. We're done with uh, blending all the fur and I'm added, I've am i finished adding the dark chocolate brown of the chow, uh, I mean the darker parts. So now I'm deciding to color the tongue. And chow chows, snow dogs, have very interesting tongues because they don't look pinkish. They're not reddish. It's an anomaly. <laughs> but chow chows have blackish, bluish, sometimes purplish looking tongues. So that's uh, what I went for. I went for the darker purple. So I'm using Purple Grace and Purple Harmony for the tongue. Of course, if you like darker, more bluish tongue for the chow, it's really up to you. You can go more, more to the bluish route or the more indigo purple. So once again, the colors I'm using are Purple Grace and Purple Harmony for the tongue. I'm using dark chocolate brown. I think that's usually the color. Dark brown is usually the color for most dog noses. And then I, I left a little bit of a highlight to uh, to remind people that the yeah, dogs have wet noses. So I'm just gonna finish up most of the colors of uh, additional textures for the big chow. Then I'll move on to the other two chows. So 
So now it's time to start coloring the other Chow Chows. And I decided to color the puppy on the right first. The color I chose for this Chow is the cream colored Chow Chow. The cream colored Chows are one of the more popular Chows because they're the ones who look more like polar bears or even panda bears if the, the pet owner decides to dye their, uh, their pets. And these are the lightest of all the chows. So I'm just using fewer colors than the cinnamon reddish colored chow that was the bigger chow that we colored. So to start, the base color that I used for the puppy on the right is caramel tan. And since it's a lighter colored chow, I decided to leave some of the white because we don't need to to make it too dark. So I went directly to what makes the chow darker, I mean, the darker shades of the fur. Once again, I'm using Caramel Tan, Yellow Serendipity, Humility Brown, and Pleasantly Peach for this palette. Since it's still a puppy as well, they don't have as much frown lines as the, the larger chow. It's not as stressed yet. <laughs> So I'm just emphasizing on the darker areas because I want to leave, once again, I want to leave some of the white parts of this chow. So I'm, uh, now I'm using Cumulity Brown and this shade of brown is not as dark. So it goes really well as well for this chow because I'm not looking for a very harsh, dark shade. The only thing that's dark about this chow is this, the nose, and I'm using dark chocolate brown for the nose. Once again, still leaving a little bit of white to let people know that these dogs have wet noses. I'm still adding some shades of brown, so it's going to be uh, have texture of the fur, and following the path of the flow of the fur. The illustrator of these snow dogs also actually did a great job because you can you can use the path of the some of the outlines as a guide to where the fur is headed or where the fur is moving. And just adding some more pink, pinkish tones with pleasantly peach to make this chow look more soft, more soft than uh, it already is. Also giving some some peach colors on the ears. Lastly, time to color this last chow, and I decided the last puppy chow that I haven't colored yet to be a representative of the grayish, darker shade of chow. It's actually one of the more rare chows, and I have uh, haven't really seen that many chows of it, so it's a very special. The color palette that I'm using for this grayish chow is Soulful Gray, <laughs> from, from because it's a gray chow, Soulful Gray, Smooth Gray, Distinguished Gray, Millennium Black, and Silver Lining. <laughs> so there's there's all shades of gray. And what's the fun thing about uh, color it, colored pencils is because of the many shades of gray, there are cooler grays and there are warmer grays. For this chow, since it's a snow dog, and when I think of snow, I think of more cooler colors. So I ch also chose cooler gray tones for this chow, starting with Soulful Gray. I also noticed uh, with my chows, they start off a little lighter, and as they grow older, their fur gets a little darker. So most, I guess that happens to many, many other dogs as well. Although when my first chow got a little older, his snout was starting to have uh, bits of white fur, I guess indicating old age, but he was still very active. So if you notice some areas uh, I'm keeping white as well to add more contrast between the gray tones and then the lightest parts. So the lightest parts I left white. So I start with the lighter grays and then I go darker and darker, especially on the darker areas like by the snout, uh, near the tongue area, it usually gets darker there, and by the, the neck. Adding texture. 
using Millennium Black for the textures, so it'll really pop from the grays. Do you have dogs of your own? Well, what breeds do you have? And feel free to share your stories on the comments. I'd love to hear more about them. So for the dark chow, uh, the puppy chow, I started with the darkening the face first because that's most usually the first thing you see with regards to characters. Then now I'm, I'm adding texture to the rest of the body of the chow. Do you also have some fun dog stories to tell us? Feel free to post on the comments below. There you have it. So that's it for most of the fur uh, coloring. Lastly, I'm just covering up most of the spots for the gray chow. And lastly, I'm going to be coloring the tongue. And just like the reddish cinnamon color chow, I'm using purple grace and purple harmony. Darker on the uh, inner part of the chow and then lighter on the farther portion. Okay guys, I'll go ahead and finish coloring the page. Be back in a few.
It's almost done, guys. And now we're done. If you enjoyed this coloring tutorial, share it to your family and friends, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more coloring tutorials, tricks, and tips. If you have any specific technique or medium that you want us to talk about in the next tutorial, feel free to comment down below and we'll do our best to put that tutorial together. For now, Follow us on social media so you can get the latest updates and freebies from Color It. This has been Debbie. Thanks for watching and remember, free your creativity.